Hi, this is John Allen Green, Franciscan Hermit from Johannesburg, with my weekly podcast. From the very first pages of recorded history, we have struggled with the problem of evil. How do we find hope while living in the shadow of evil? Despair and pessimism is perhaps the easy route, which brings its own type of consolation in its type of stoic nihilism that Jesus affirms blasphemes the Holy Spirit. Our Western understanding of what it means to be human has developed from the insights of our great minds in philosophy, in theology, as well as in psychology, but it is naturally limited and distinct from the many other civilizations that have their own great convictions on this subject of evil. The malice and the vindictiveness of the moments of our confrontation with the nature of evil requires more than the band-aid and painkillers we would apply. One particular strand of insight argues that evil comes about because of a type of mediocrity in the pursuit of virtue, while another strand of thinkers would argue that evil comes about precisely because of a type of zealous overkill, where moderation would be the best answer. The question of the deep fundamental character of evil requires a depth of thinking and perception that seems very much to have slipped beyond our comprehension in this post-truth era. Averting from our eyes from the reality of evil does not mean it's not there. Neither is it likely to go away. Quoting the poet, God may be refuted, but Satan is not. Evil intrudes into our consciousness on every page of the newspapers, in every new broadcast, and in the technicolor world of social media. Evil intrudes into our consciousness in the workplace, in our homes, and in the very heart of the church itself. The constant fallacy of hasty generalization, jumping to conclusions about all things from what is known in a small number of individual cases. The very real evil of racism and sexism take the form of these hasty generalizations. Evil intrudes into our consciousness as the sons of the soil this project that infects our church and even our Franciscan order here in South Africa and strips us of our humanity as it strips all religion of every truth and goodness. If we look to the book of Ecclesiastics, it affirms that much wisdom is much grief and the increase of knowledge increases sorrow also. I think that every encounter with evil does in some way leave our humanity scarred and leaves us sad. Just as the influence of the Holy Spirit is recognized when one does an act of love, Christians must recognize the presence of the devil when bullying occurs, Pope Francis said. When we realize that we harbor within ourselves the desire to attack someone because they are weak. We have no doubt it is the devil, because attacking the weak is the work of Satan. I ask myself, what is it within these people? What is it within us that pushes us to mock and mistreat others, weaker than we are? It is understandable when a person resents someone stronger than them perhaps because of envy, but toward the weak. What makes us do that? It is something habitual, as if I need to ridicule another person to feel confident in myself, as if it were a necessity. Although psychologists may give a different reason as to why some are inclined to bully the weak, but Francis said he believed it was the consequence of original sin and the work of Satan, who has no compassion. 
In his recent pastoral visit to Chile, Pope Francis spoke of the pain and shame he experienced for the irreparable damage of those who had been abused by the priests of our church. Meeting with the survivors, they expressed to the pontiff their shame, their suffering, and their real un ongoing anguish at the lies and cover-ups by clerical authorities. People are leaving the church because they don't find a protective space there, said Juan Carlos Claret, spokesman for the group of church members of Osorno. The pastors are eating the flock, he said. Clerical belittling, intimidation and bullying of victims goes far beyond child abuse and includes countless men and women who have been shamed and publicly humiliated at the hands of their pastors and clerical superiors. Many who have not ended their lives in total despair have become the ongoing victims of the evil that lies at the heart of our church. As Pope Francis concluded, saying, Therefore, brothers and sisters, for the children of this earth, for the children of their children, let us say with Jesus to the Father, May we, too, be one to make us artisans of unity. Psychologists have noted the phenomena of bullying has long been downplayed as a rite of passage, which forms part of growing up, part of formation. The article continues that pure abuse includes not only physical intimidation and extortion, but also non-hopeful forms of persecution, such as systematic taunting and teasing, sexual harassment, gossip, and social ostracism. The effects of non-corporate bullying tend to be more devastating than physical harassment. We live in an age where even in adult discourse, it often is an abrogation of civility and charity of thought. This is a social disease, and the basic codes of decency and empathy need to be restated, and perhaps even reformulated. Our social structures, paternalism, patriarchal institutes, and even our church language have for too long been the veil behind which abuse and evil sneers at their victims. But a new power has come to town. Victims everywhere have found their collective power through social media. As a story from Nigeria, Africa, clearly demonstrates. Amadi Onyekachi says she was sexually assaulted by a Nigerian police officer in mid-October 2017. Initially, she felt she will never get justice because there was no way she could report the incident to local police. Instead, Amadi took to Instagram to express her thoughts and then went to bed, albeit tired and tra traumatized. While she slept, her post, which detailed the alleged assault, went viral across Nigeria, generating hundreds of likes and comments and thousands of reposts. In her post, she said a special anti-robbery squad officer ordered her out of her taxi and accused her of being a yahoo, a scammer girl, and a prostitute. She said he then accused her of being a drug dealer and needed to search her body. She quotes, This bastard put his hands inside my bra while I was shouting and trying to get out he said he was going to beat me up if he heard another sound. He forcefully put his hands in my pants and put his hands inside my body. When Yakachi told Voice of Africa, the post attracted the attention of the Deputy Commissioner of Police and a public relations officer in Kwara State where the incident took place. When Yakachi was called in to provide a formal statement and identify her attacker, which he said was easy 
because the officer had a noticeable limp. The officer in question was charged and is now awaiting trial. Onyekachi says if she hadn't posted on social media, the arrest would never have happened. Now she is urging other women to come forward if they are assaulted. I want to let people know they should speak up. Otherwise, attackers won't be corrected or punishment. Not just police officers, but people generally, she says. It's not only in Nigerian Hollywood, but women and men from all over the world have now found courage in their collective power to speak out against the powers of darkness and evil, wherever it is to be found. Awareness and a movement to full consciousness requires that each of one tells our own story, our own particular story of any darkness and evil in the heart of society and also in the heart of the Church. We are assured that God always responds to our collective sacred violence with non-violent love. The realization that God is on the side of victims is center to biblical revelation. God is always on the side of the victim, from the Garden of Gethsemane to the cross upon Golgotha, from the gas chambers of the Third Reich to the victims of African ethnic cleansing, from the victims of the sexual predators in the Church. God assures us that he is with each and every victim. Jesus today silences evil so that it no longer has the last word. Evil and death are overcome, not only in our hearts, not only in our minds, but also in our bodies. Jesus is our hope as we stare into the abyss of the evil that seeks to engulf us. So I ask you all, please, to continue to pray with me for the Order of Friars Minor, the Franciscans, of the province of Southern Africa as it moves forward into the chapter of the 29th of January 2018. And so we pray, we adore you, most holy Lord Jesus Christ, here and in every holy place throughout the world. Open our awareness to your presence, here, now. Grant us the courage that we may gather together as your children and as little brothers to each other. Help us to know ourselves in your light and to open ourselves to your grace, freed from entitlement and self-righteousness. Give us your strength to release our attachment to pride, to power, manipulation and domination. Free us from our illusions of control and privilege. Align our minds and our hearts to your will for our lives, the order, the church and our world. May your wisdom walk with us, so that we may speak your prophetic truth with respect and the charity of humble hearts. Hear us, O Lord, and answer us. Amen. Mary, our Mother, pray for us. Amen. May the Lord grant you peace.